In this episode, I will show you how to step-by-step -step create system for advanced home current measurement. Attention! The electricity meter module must be connected to the home electrical system by an electrician, as modifications to the electrical system by yourself may result in electric shock or fire. Links to sample pages where you can buy the required items and other useful links and information will be included in the description. The first and most important element is the multifunctional electricity meter with network analyzer functions Eastron SDM630 Modbus V2. It is a device that will be connected to the electrical network and we will read information from it. The next device is the Raspberry Pi version 3B Plus or newer, I am using the fourth version. Older versions cannot be used due to the lack of the USB boot option. Another needed element is a USB SSD. The disk capacity does not matter, it can be even 16 GB, it must have a USB 3.0 cable. I used a 120 GB disk because I found the smallest one. It is not worth using a pen drive instead of an SSD, because although the system may perform better than on an SD card, it will perform worse than with an SSD disk. For communication between the Raspberry Pi and the meter, you need a USB to RS485 converter and two short wires. To power the Raspberry Pi, you need a minimum 3 amp power supply with a voltage of 5 volts and the appropriate cables. I used the rail power supply to which I connected the USB socket and connected it to the Raspberry Pi via the USB-C cable. The elements needed only for a moment are a micro SD card on which the system will be configured, which will then be transferred to an SSD drive, mouse, keyboard, HDMI cable with a micro HDMI adapter, and a monitor. If you intend to put the entire system on rails, an optional element is to print or buy a Raspberry Pi case that can be easily hung on a rail. Once you have all the necessary elements ready, we start with preparing the software for the Raspberry Pi. In the description, you have a link to the page where you can download the program to upload the system to the SD card. Click the download button and after downloading, run the downloaded file. In the open window, click install and then finish. We choose the choose OS option and choose the first option, Raspberry Pi desktop. Then click choose SD card and choose our SD card. Now select write and wait for the system to be loaded onto the SD card. Now insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and connect the cables from the mouse, keyboard, monitor, and power supply. We wait for the system to boot and carry out the system configuration. We click next and choose our country and language. Now we enter the password for our device. If you have a black frame around the screen, as it is with me, then you select the visible box. Now we connect to the Wi-Fi network and update the system, it may take a few minutes. After the update, click OK and we do not reset the system yet. We open the menu, Preferences, and Raspberry Pi configuration. In the Interfaces tab, we run VNC to have remote access to the Raspberry Pi desktop. In the upper right corner, there is a new icon, after clicking which we can check our local IP. For remote access to work without a connected monitor, we must set the default screen resolution. Start the console and enter sudo raspy config, select display options, resolution, and select full HD resolution. When asked if we want to restart the system, choose no. Now connect our disk to the USB 3.0 port and turn off the window that pops up. We open the menu, click on the Accessories tab, and select the SD card copier program. Select the SD card as the source device and the SSD disk as the target device and click Start. Copying the data will take a few minutes, after the backup is finished, turn off the system. Now disconnect all elements except the SSD drive, and then connect the power supply again. Now you need to download the VNC program and install it on your computer. There is also a smartphone version of this program. 
After installation, run the program and enter the local IP of Raspberry Pi in the bar at the top, which we checked earlier. As a login, enter Pi, and as a password, enter the password that we set up when configuring the device. After the first connection, we may have an incorrect screen resolution, to fix it, open the menu, then preferences, and run screen configuration. Right-click on the HDMI text and change the resolution to full HD, and then confirm the changes made. Now we will install Demotics on our device. We open the console and thanks to the connection via VNC you can copy the commands from the description of this video and paste them into the console thanks to the clipboard synchronization. Paste the appropriate command and click Enter. At the first message, click Enter, then select HTTP. Change the port to 80 and leave the second one unchanged, leave the default folder and wait for the installation to finish. After installing, click enter and open the browser to check if Demotics works. We enter our local IP as the website address. You can now enter the settings and change the location, language, and appearance. We restart the console and install the plugin that supports the electricity meter. The first command sets the console location to the plugins folder, and the second command copies the plugin to this folder. Now we connect our USB to the RS-485 converter and reset the system. Now everything is installed and we don't need direct access to Raspberry anymore. We turn off VNC and after restarting the device, enter its local IP into the browser. Now go to the hardware tab and choose Eastron SDM630 Modbus as the type. We give it a name and change the port to the converter we connected. We add this device. Now we go to the Devices tab and see 88 counters that are handled by our device. Now click the green arrow next to each counter and you can optionally rename each counter. When we enter the Utility tab, we will see all our counters. Now it's time to put the system together. We mount the USB socket to the power supply, then connect the meter with the converter with two wires, connect port A with A and port B with B. Now our meter must be connected to our home electrical installation. This is what it looks like when mounted on rails in an electrical box. From now on, all data will be saved on our device and we can check the daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly history from each meter. You can also add counters to your favorites so that they appear on the home page. If you have any questions, write them in the comments, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like the movie.